What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's news we have Joe Rogan. He reacts to Conor McGregor's new 190 pound frame. Francis Nagata responds after former coach claim he tried to prevent Cyril Gaon from signing with the UFC. Chelsea Sun and Reed count the nights that John Jones mooned his mother. And much much more. If you are new please hit that subscribe button and also like the video. For Joe Rogan, 2020 was a year that the narrative started to shift on him as a UFC commentator. Once essentially universally beloved for being a prominent voice of the world's biggest MMA promotion, Rogan's incredible upward trajectory as a premier podcaster and comedian has become a prominent part of his life. Rogan was cage sided on commentary for just 6 UFC events over the past year and even had a 4 months hiatus between the cards from July to October. When he was on call, reviews from fans online were generally mixed. For anyone who thinks Joe Rogan's commentary has dipped in quality or he has become an ill prepared to give a live analyst of the biggest pay-per-view fights, he is sure that he's still putting forth a lot of effort into his UFC gig. Peter Yan has punishment on his mind going into the new year. As the UFC calendar prepares to flip a page into 2020, one of the most suspected matchups on the horizon is the Bantamweight Championship unification bout between Aljamain Sterling and interim title holder Peter Yan. The bad blood between the two is legitimate and steaming from the controversial first meeting at UFC 259, when Yan cost himself the belt by getting disqualified with a legal knee strike on Sterling. A rematch between the two was briefly booked for UFC 267 in October, but Sterling was not medically clear to compete after undergoing neck surgery following their first bout. Jan instead fought Corey Sanhagen and won a unanimous decision to claim the interim belt. And now the stage is set for a rematch with Sterling next year. It's clear that the fight is prominent in Jan's mind because he issued a reminder of his attentions on social media. Justin Gagey wants Charles Oliveira to know that he wasn't being two-faced when he congratulated him for being Dustin Poirier. During the UFC 269 post show, Gagey praised Oliveira but said he gets hit a lot and can't wait to break his face. Speaking to MMA Fighting, Oliveira accused of Gagey of not keeping that same energy when he was face to face with them, prompting Gagey to fire back. He wrote on Twitter, at Charles Dubronx, it's called Respect You Fool and we are in the business of breaking faces. My respect that night was real as in my attention to take everything from you in your own country. At UFC. UFC heavyweight champion Francis Nagata said his former gym purposely didn't release his full sparring videos with Ciro Gunn. Fans got a glimpse of Nagata's sparring sessions with Gunn more than three years ago at the MMA factory in Paris, but Nagata thinks that the clips were only released to make Gunn look good. I mean, like when I saw that footage, uh, my first reaction was laughing, you know, because I know exactly what happened at those training, uh, training section is about to make him look better and make me look bad and yet haven't seen me like in my beast mode. Chris Weidman isn't sure where Tyron Woolley will go after getting knocked out by Jake Paul. The former UFC welterweight champion transition to boxing hasn't been a successful one and Woolley now is 0-6 in his past 6 contests. Although Woolley has made heavy paychecks boxing Paul twice, Weidman thinks he has damaged his career. I'm with you. I got. I work, I'm, I'm cringy even the fact that we've been talking about them for so long. But I'm still interested. I tuned in. I watched. You know, I'm I'm, I'm down to see what happens. You know, I can't believe Tyron Woodley got knocked out like that. That was crazy. I still. I mean, the, he faked the body, faked the body, and just came super hard with that 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 right hand. And that's really, I think his that was the way he was going to win that fight. Uh, so props to him for making it happen. And damn, Tyron Woodley's going to have to live with that. You know, he's going to seem like they're just comparing him to Ben Asker now. And I, he's not going to get another chance. Like, that's it. Um, and um, I don't know who he's going to fight that would give him uh, the draw and excitement that he would need to, like, elevate him back to where he would feel uh you know, like like people would gather behind him and think that he's legit again. Um, I think his his uh, his legacy has definitely been tarnished, which sucks to say. Um, Chell Sonnen and John Jones have a long and storied history dating back to the light heavyweight title fight in 2013. Despite the decisive outcome in their title fight, Bones and the American Gangster never buried the hatchet. Instead, the pair have continued to trade insults over the course of the past eight and a half years. The trend continued this past weekend after John Jones came across a report that Chell Sonnen was detained in Las Vegas for multiple citations of battery. While Sonnen has yet to publicly address Jones for those comments, the former UFC title Title challenger 
did recently share a lighthearted story about Bones. Ready to go to the airport at 6 a.m. So when I go down to the lobby with my bag, there's only two people in the entire lobby, which is John and my mom. And they're sitting at a table visiting. And John is wearing nothing but red sweatpants. No socks, no shoes, no shirt, no hat. I mean, when I say nothing but red sweatpants, he's just sitting there visiting with my mom. She's in the lobby for the same reason I am, which is, you know, we're get, get in the car and go to the airport, come back home. So when I walk in, I thought, well, this is kind of a nice scene, but I wonder what they're talking about. Like, what do you talk about with the guy that just beat up your son? I mean, how does that go? Now, it's fair game. I'd have done the same thing to him. It's fair game, but I wonder what they're talking about. So, John had been drinking a little bit, and he was telling my mom. He just told her what he did that night. Yeah, we went out, and I was, you know, with my brothers and had a good time. Real candid and open talk. And so, you know, we shake hands, and we part ways. And John goes up, and he gets in the elevator. And the way this hotel was built is when you're inside, all the doors are facing out. Big rectangle that goes up, but you can see everybody's doors. Then the elevator is all glass. So when John goes and gets in the elevator, we can see him fully. And when he gets out of the elevator to go to his room, we can see him fully and he's on the rail. So just before my mom and I walk away, he's now gotten up to his floor, gotten out of the elevator, and he yells down in some fashion, but he, he gets our attention. He then turns around, drops his pants, and, and moons my mom. Now, my mom is like, that's funny. I mean, she thought this was great to this day. Like she went home and was telling her Facebook friends, you know, how 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 John about her whole experience, but then John Jones mooned her. And I I Joe Rogan reacts to Conor McGregor's new 190 pound frame. What happened to him? Got fucking fights, man. Fights happened to him. Yeah. And then also a shit ton of money. And then also yeah. sometime out of the game while he was doing the Floyd Mayweather thing. You know, he mm -hmm. trained for quite a while for Floyd Mayweather, which he was, I'm sure, just doing boxing. If you're going to play, you know, you're going to train for a giant $100 million fight, you're most likely not going to do any, you know, right, MMA right. sparring or anything. You probably just did that for a while. And then you get that money. What's that Marvin Hagler quote about it's hard to get up at five in the morning and go running when you're sleeping in silk sheets? I think that's the f that's him now. He's super jacked. Whoa, Usada's gonna take it. Wait, took a visit. That's to him Connor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, he looks like he's about to go WWF. Yeah, he looks like a bodybuilder. Well, from, that's like, the a, 70s. It's a weird picture, honestly. I mean, he's definitely jacked, but it looks to me like he's in the middle of lifting. And if you uh, if you see a guy's body in the middle of lifting, it's a little deceptive. Because everything, see, that's what he looks like now. He's still jacked. He lo still looks great. But when you're, um, when you lift weights, like as you do it, like those bodybuilders that go on stage before those uh, big Mr. Olympia things, yeah. they all get pumped. Olympioid. Right? <laughs> that's Olympioid. a great term for it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. He looks good, though. Whoa. He looks so old now. He looks different. Yeah. Well, he's got that, that crazy beard. beard. That beard's crazy. But he looks fit. Is he and tucking up his shorts to let his dick come out? He's got a hog, I bet. I bet. I bet he's got a hog. <laughs> Why are he tucking um, up shorts? He uh, looks like he's walking around on that shin. I wonder uh, like what percentage healed it is. You got to feel like if a bone breaks in half like that, and then you get like a metal plate to hold it in place and all these screws and shit, yeah. that's got to take a while. Mm -hmm.